It must be important for you to come over here in the middle of the night. But I, I called Georgia and she said she was just finishing up. She expected you and I should just let myself in. Ah, the key's still left above the fire extinguisher in the hall. Yeah, I wonder if there's anybody left in Riverside that doesn't know that. Oh, what's to steal in here? Though Georgia mentions to me every other day that her typewriter qualifies as an antique. <laughs> was it uh, an important evening? Gracie Mansion. Really? Mm-hmm. The uh, mayor's reception? Ray Woodard was scheduled to speak for Bill, but under the circumstances, she asked that I stand in for her. And how did it go? Uh, I think it went well. I didn't speak for long, five minutes or so. And I kept it pretty much to Bill and uh, offered Ray's continued support for the city under the new administration, general stuff. But uh, the response was pretty big. I'm sure that's because everyone in that room was fairly close to Bill Woodard. At least half of them had been at the funeral. Was Ray Woodard there? Yes. Well, you look terrific in your evening suit. Thank you. Yeah, I finally broke down and bought my own. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember the time when I left that rented dinner jacket in the trunk of the rented car and then lost the parking ticket. And you couldn't remember the make or model number in an eight-story midtown garage. <laughs> How could I forget that? And Charlie Ferris said to me, he said, uh, he said, look at Frank Ryan, will you? Addressing the Irish American Historical Society in his confirmation suit. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know how to do this. There is something wrong, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Jill, if there's any trouble and I can help, you know I will. You know, it's strange. This is the nicest conversation we've had in months. And I know you're trying to keep it going so I can pull myself together. And now I want desperately to keep it going so I don't have to tell you what it is I came over here to say. Well, why don't you just go ahead and get it off your chest? I am so sorry. I know this is going to complicate things for both of us. But you have to know. Last night, I found out that... that Edmund is your son after all. Online to say that without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> Mrs. Ryan, I'll be quiet. Okay, just don't bother me. Just get out of here and leave me alone. You have a visitor. I don't want any visitors. I'm too miserable. Mrs. Ryan, it's your mother-in-law. May, may, is she here? Is she really here? I thought she'd be pleased. Mrs. Ryan, come on in. She's awake. Oh, I was asking for you. Oh, May, I wanted you to come here. I really did, but the nurse wouldn't let me call. She said it was too late. Shh, darling. I called over here to see how you were doing. And they told me that you were asking for me, so I came straight over. Thank you. I guess you must have known that I wanted to see you. Is Johnny going to be mad at you? No, of course not. He sends his love, and so does Kevin. Don't. 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 Now, what's troubling you? Tell me. I wanted Mama. And then I wanted you, and I wanted the whole family just the way it used to be. 
I wanted Frank, and, and I wanted Bobby, and I wanted Pat, and I wanted Mary. You know, when Mary used to like me? And then I, I wanted Kathleen, you know, when, when she let me borrow her white silk blouse with the lace collar. And, and then I wanted, I wanted Siobhan. You know, Siobhan used to tell me that I was pretty. Oh, everyone thinks you're pretty. No, I'm not pretty anymore. Oh, but you do. Yeah. Is, is Johnny going to come and visit me? Of course he will. And Frank? Because that's what I'd like. I would like Frank to be here, and I would like Johnny to be here. I would like Kevin to be here. I would like Bobby to be here. I want, I want, I want Mary, and I want Jack to be here. And I want Pat to see me with everybody. It'll be like I'm, I'm part of the whole family again. Oh, I forgot. A little, little John. What about little John? Is he oh, okay? Oh, he's just splendid. God bless him. I've been a terrible mother. Oh, now, Dee, don't start. Don't do this to No, I have been. I have been a terrible mother. And that's the truth, and I want you to know that. But I, I still want you to love me. You know, some days I don't even think about little John. You know that? And sometimes when I think about him, I hate him. I just, I, I really didn't know what I was getting into. Whatever do you mean, Dee? I mean, I, I want to tell you something. I, I don't think that, that you know this. What? I had little John on purpose. I knew that Frank was seeing Jill, so I, I got pregnant, and I knew that he would, he would stop seeing her. And I was right, because for a while he did. But I'm not a good mother. I am not a good mother at all. I don't know what I'm doing. Darling, when you're well, and your life is going along fine, and you're happy, you're a lovely mother. No, no, I'm yes, not. Yes, well, I think you are. No. I would like to be lovely at something. But he's going to leave me. Oh. Dee, please, don't do this. You're flying off in every direction to disaster. Like a wild thing. Patrick's not leaving you. Nothing's happened to little John. And the family still loves you and wants you. Everything else is just in your head, darling. And when you're feeling better, it's just going to go all away like a bad dream. Did you talk to Pat? Of course. Did you talk to Pat about me? Well, of course we talk about you. I mean, there's nothing much else on his mind these days. Really? Surely you must know that. No, I don't know that. What? I want to know something. Did he say to you, did he say to you that he wouldn't leave me? Dee, listen to me now. Patrick, hasn't he promised to love and take care of you? Yes. And wasn't that a solemn promise, an oath? Yes. Well, in all the years that you've known Patrick, have you ever known him to deliberately break his word? Hmm? No. Well, no, he hasn't. He's certainly not going to begin now, dear. I feel better, uh, I think. Ah, uh, good. Now, do you think, do you think maybe you can get some sleep now? Hmm? I think so, but please, please, just stay with me, oh, please. Oh, so not going anywhere. <laughs> just close your eyes, darling. Okay. Close your eyes. Yeah. I feel better, I think. I, I just want to uh, be all right, uh, as long as I know for sure. Well, you just be sure. Just be sure that you know that you're ours and we'll always be here for you. I hope so. That's not possible. Not only is it possible, but it is. You told me that's that Edmund was conceived when you and Seneca went up for the weekend at the beach house. That was in August, a year ago. Yes, yes, because that's what Dr. Wolf told me, but it was, it was wrong. It just wasn't so. Edmund was conceived in August after you left Delia. It was late September when you, when you withdrew from the congressional campaign. And Edmund is your son. Jill, how do you know? Simply stated, it has to do with Edmund's blood. Blood and, uh... He couldn't have gotten that from Seneca or me, because neither one of us have that kind of subtype. But you do carry that subtype. So there is no doubt that Edmund is your son. Well, how did you find this out? Seneca told me. And this is the hard part. He, he's known since Edmund was six weeks old. What? Yes, he found out after the operation, and he just chose not to tell me. Oh. Why? How could he do that? Because he thought that I... <sighs> Seneca decided in his infinite wisdom that you were a, a painful and destructive influence on my life. 
that you had many opportunities to marry me, but you hadn't done so. And if I knew that Edmund was your child, I would let you back into my life, back into my bed, and ultimately, I would be in a lot more trouble than I could handle. Because I also had to worry about Edmund, too. Where does he get so off? Dr. Bolak decided that he would wait until there was enough emotional distance between us, and he could entrust me with that information. So he... He told me last night... Oh, I'm sorry, but my first reaction is that I simply want to tear him apart. Well, my, my sympathies go right along with you. Look, explain it to me again. How Dr. No, I mean, you're in a hospital surrounded by doctors and not one of them can thank calculate you, how when a baby was conceived. I don't understand. Wait one second, please. Now, some of this is my fault. When I got back from the beach in August, I, I was feeling dizzy all the time. I wasn't sleeping. My cycle was all, all off. So I, I just decided that it was nerves. And I was right. That's exactly what it was. But when Bill Wolf asked me when the pregnancy symptoms started, I, I thought back and, and there it was. Now, we were just about four weeks off. Look. I'm not defending Seneca. I think what he did is inexcusable. But I, I do understand why and how he, he got himself so involved with Edmund. Well, I'd like to understand how a man can calmly lay claim to another man's son. Oh, why he would want to do it, besides the obvious reason. Which is? He wanted you! So he lies. And he went on lying for the better part of a year. He let me turn my whole life around and walk away from you, my son. He took advantage of every opportunity that he could to put more distance between us. And he watched and he waited until the damage was done. And... Frank, Frank, look, you don't have to argue with me. I am not defending him. I meant it. I'm sorry. And just for the record, I... I think that you should know that Seneca and I are no longer living together. Well, uh... Now that we know the truth, I guess the next question is, what happens next? Right back. Long term. Hey. Hey. What are you doing here at this hour? Delia. Yes. God bless us all. Tell me, weren't you and Tom downtown seeing the Finellis? Yes. It was wonderful. Tom dropped me by here so I could check on two of my patients. Come on, tell me about Delia. Oh, Faith, I don't know what to say. She's in a pathetic way, let me tell you that. Oh, most of her troubles are of her own making, but that doesn't make her any less frightened. Of what? Well, she's got it into her head that Patrick is going to leave her, that the family will disown her, and that the sky is falling henny penny. Oh, dear. Well, she may be right. Patrick has changed. Yes, he has. But if he's gotten past the need to take care of Dee, it's the best thing that ever happened to him. Ah, yes, but the question is, what is going to happen to Delia? Well, I sound callous if I say that I'm not the least bit worried about her. <sighs> well, anyway, tell me something nice about this evening. <sighs> okay, well, let me see. Jack and Mary and Ryan are as happy as any three people in this entire world. Oh, that's nice of the nice. And uh, Tom Desmond is about the most interesting man I have ever met in this uh -huh. entire world. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, 
Well, I must confess, Dr. Coleridge, you have excellent taste in men. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's almost too much. I mean, he's gentle and very dear and terribly funny. And bright and handsome with a mysterious past. Ah, uh, I think that mystery, I'm afraid, is serious business. Yeah, I know it is. I just wish he'd tell me and be done with it. Mm, I may be wrong, Faith, but I have a feeling you're a lot safer if you don't know. answer to that. I, I haven't been able to think past the point of just telling you. The problem is, the more I, I think about it, telling you is really very impractical. There's nothing that you can do about it, and there's not very much that I want you to do about it. But I do know that my real trouble began when I didn't tell you immediately that the baby might be Seneca's. And I can't assess the harm that Seneca's done by not telling me about Edmund's blood type the moment he learned about it. But I just, I just couldn't keep the secrets going any longer. No. You did the right thing. I can't tell what you're thinking. I don't know what your reaction is. It's because I don't know what my reaction is. Look. Please understand that I, I'm not asking you to take responsibility for Edmund. I'm not asking you to take responsibility for me in any way. This is not an appeal to pick up where we left off. I know that's impossible. Yes, it, uh, it is. But you do have another son. There's another Ryan, and I, I think that you need to know that. Yes. real mess, isn't it? Yeah. And very unfair. More unfair to you, I should think, than to me. Why do you say that? Well, because I had the impression that things were going well for you. That you had what you wanted. And leaving all this out of it, that you and Seneca were very happy together. Yeah, we were. And I am sorry, Jill. I'm sorry, too. Does anyone else know? Faith? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to be the one to tell the family. Sure, of course. I wanted so much to talk to Maeve this afternoon. Yeah, sure. <sighs> Frank? I'd like for... What? I've... I've really become very happy. Thinking about Edmund being brought up in a traditional family with a, a father who would be there full time. Yes. And maybe my first instinct after, after you and I, I mean, maybe it was right when I knew that we, we couldn't work things out between us. I, I can raise Edmund by myself, and I know I can do a good job at it. I know you can, Jill. But even so, he... He should know who his father is. Yes. 
And I really think that we can work something out. I think we can, too. But not tonight, okay? It's, uh... Let's think it over and we'll talk again tomorrow. Fine. Can I take you home? Uh, no. No, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. And anyway, you have lots of things on your desk to read and sign. No, I'm not sure whether you're being polite or if you really rather be alone. I think I need a couple of minutes by myself. I understand. Good night. Jill? Uh, try not to worry about it. It'll be all right. There has to be a, an intelligent situ an, an intelligent answer to this entire situation. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Thank you. And breakfast in bed with SoapNet. Sleep in, curl up, and check out with back-to-back -back episodes of One Tree Hill and Beverly Hills 90210. Breakfast in bed, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday on SoapNet.